So what are the top universities in Britain? I think it's 18th to give you some context there. Exeter University is offering a master's degree in the occult. Um, I'm not really sure. Like we've had a lot of conversations about these different sort of like modern liberal arts degrees and exactly to what degree they help. Like, or how does lesbian dance theory become a job when the person gets out and needs to pay off the student loans? This one, this one has has its own implications. But I just kind of wonder, like, if you were selling the occultish um, or occultist degree, <laughs> how are you going to promise people that they should pay? pay this back or it could pay this back like what's the what's, what, what's the profession that goes with this because I, I didn't think that which was a high paying job but I mean I, I guess I've never looked into it I mean I, I suppose that's a fair criticism all right this is a real story even though it, it sounds like a parody and there's a lot that we can read into this about the modern state of the culture which we will talk about in a second but let me just show you this is actually you know, a, a real article of the New York Times, at least to the degree that the New York Times puts out real articles. <laughs> um, so here you go. A UK university will confer a new title, a master's degree in the occult. Yeah, you can put that on your LinkedIn page. All right, we're going to It'll focus on magic, folklore and rituals. We're going to scroll down here. This is it, it really is an, an interesting thing. Because the University of Exeter will offer a postgraduate degree in magic and occult science, which the school says is the first of its kind at a British university. They make that sound like it's a good thing, like this is the first of its kind. It's like, uh, okay, but if it's trash, it's not actually a feature that it's the first of its kind. It just means that you're doing something that shouldn't be done. But anyway, and it'll be offered in September 2024, which came out of the recent surge in, the, in history, sorry, recent surge in interest in the history of witchcraft and a desire to create a space where research on magic could be studied across academic fields. I have come to hate the phrase create a space. I don't know about you, but it's always just like, I have to create a space for my own interests because the rest of the world doesn't care. Um, it, it's, it's just like, it's very like indiv individualistic. It's, it's, it's like the whole my truth of, of spaces, but I digress. So we're talking about researching magic across academic fields. I mean, okay, I guess in literature you have different mentions of uh, magic and occultism. In history you certainly do, you know, with the witch burnings and so on, which, um, yeah. Uh, so there's that, and obviously the fact that you did have people who were practicing witchcraft throughout history but I don't really see much use in the other academic fields. Um, I, I don't see it. But hey, you know, we'll just go on. It's, it's their money. What, what can you say? Coursework will include the study of, of Western dragons in law, literature and art, archaeology theory, the depiction of women in the Middle Ages, the practice of deception and illusion, and the philosophy of psychedelics. Now, <laughs> this is one of those, those, those topics that's just like hard to cover because it's just so ridiculous, all right? But, I mean, I, I'm trying here. Archaeology theory, um, I, I don't see exactly how the study of um, magic and occultism really ties into that. Truthfully, I don't. As for the depiction of women in the Middle Ages, um, I mean, I, I figure that the the way that they would cover this, because like there's this overlap between uh, feminism and the push of of this particular brand of the occult, and it's like I imagine that they would cover that as well. Women were were falsely discriminated against as being witches, especially if they were successful, and therefore magic is good, which is like this this very like like this very obvious fallacy that there isn't actually you know a leaning from one to the other. Um, it, it's possible for some people to dislike women and also for magic to be bad and also for the occult to be um, an evil that, pe that people should avoid. Seriously, it, it's it's bad for your soul to play with, with such things. It, it really is. But And then you've got the philosophy of psychedelics. Well, what's, what kind of jumps to my mind at that point is, well, when you're dealing with psychedelics, you're dealing with chemicals that you know, adjust the brain so that you can 
uh, experience such things as hallucinations. But what's interesting about hallucinations is that they're not real. Right? They're fabrications of your own mind when it is, in a sense, poisoned. Okay? And, I mean, maybe you don't care that the person is, is playing with hallucinogens. But, um, I don't really see why there's a philosophy associated with that, per se. Because that's just the the philosophy of self-deception. Because you're just seeing what, what your mind produces when exposed to various different substances. That doesn't seem healthy. But the, what's interesting is, right, in that very same quote here where we were, so you've, got, you've also got the practice of deception and illusion. Because that's what these people... Um, play at. It's what they practice and it's what they enjoy. It's, I mean, all this is satanic and that, that goes together with, with lies and deception. And I'm kind of glad that they're at least spelling that out, even if not for the right reason, but they are actually, they're actually listing it, that they're going to study deception and illusion, which is fundamental to this whole uh, branch of the occult. All right. But let's just go down a little bit further. So it says, you've got Christina Oakley Harrison, who's a founder of a magical bookstore. She said that many witches she knew were talking about the, deg the degree program uh, and were thinking about enrolling, not because they're idiots and think it's going to teach them how to wave a wand and do a spell. Okay, hold on. Hold on, because there's a contradiction here, right? She said many witches. <laughs> Many witches were talking about the degree program and wanting to enroll, but not because they think they're going to pass a spell. Well, what makes them witches? I mean, I realize that these people are big on deception, but this is kind of a pretty obvious lie. No, they, they do think that they practice spells. Um, maybe not with a wand. I don't know. Um, not really a spell doer, but... Certainly, these people in, in England who embrace things, you know, like, like Wicca is the most, I guess, popular, modern uh, version of it, but they really do believe that they are casting spells and that it has a, a spiritual effect. And so, like, you can't say these people identify themselves as witches. I love that phrase, identify themselves um, as witches, but not because they're going to do a spell. That's not why they're going to the... That's not why, why they're going to join the course about magic. Like, well, yeah, it kind of is. I mean, rather obviously, in fact. It's just a very obvious lie, so I just thought I'd kind of point that out. Because they basically, they don't want to be described as people who are in some way backwards uh, by believing in a type of spiritualism, but that's, that's exactly the truth. Um, here we go. There's also been a renewed interest in witches, with feminism and pop culture embracing them as symbols of female independence. Now, th those two have gone together, like pretty much always. I mean, maybe it wasn't always called feminism, but you had a branch of it uh, that was a very big part of uh, the occult and specifically of witches and so on. And they had their whole uh, Mother Earth worship that kind of like inter intersects with it. You have the worship of Gaia, which is, again, the name that they've given to this Mother Earth deity, which they seem to believe has a type of uh, consciousness and through which uh, to which they offer various sacrifices. It's absolutely a uh, religious enterprise that goes together with feminism. It's like it's a, it's a, it's a worship of the, this feminine icon um, instead, and, and also an elevation of um, women above men as being closer to this uh, to this fake deity. So that all goes together. But the statement that there's been a renewed interest in witches, I think, is true, but also interesting because it's like this is England, <laughs> okay? This is England, which has become an increasingly secular society, um, especially you know throughout the twentieth century. You could, you could very much see uh, the the rate at which people were failing to even identify themselves as Christians. So, like, originally you may have had people who just said, yeah, I'm Church of England because that's how I was raised. And then over time, they just basically stopped saying that too. You know, even if for multiple generations, there were less and less attendees of church and that kind of thing, and actually practicing the faith in any way. Well, 
The people who moved away from the faith often did so because they claimed that they were embracing uh, rationality and reason and secularism and so on, all presuming that they were all one and the same. But what you have instead inside of that, what you might call spiritual vacuum, is a, a surge in people who are moving toward, I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. And I'm sure you've heard it before. But that's what we're talking about, is the replacement of, of religion, and especially of Christianity, with, um, with this instead. So it's not simply, oh, we're going to go live and, and become, be super beholden to, to science alone. Like, no. Um, and, and really, you can have the worship of science become a religion too, but that's kind of a different point. But it, it does all go together with the fact that there's this longing in the human heart, and as long as it is unfulfilled, you have these people who will who will fill it with the wrong thing. And so this thing about how, well, England's become a secular society because it cares more about um, being more reason-based doesn't actually match because instead you had the sort of paganism that you would ha have had in England prior to and the conversion of England to, to Christianity or back then to Catholicism um, you would have had the the Druids and all of that right the Celtic religions um, anyway let's let, let, let's let's keep going I think there's a little bit more here that I wanted to that I wanted to cover yeah here we go so we've got this quote from the doctor who has received hundreds of inquiries over recent days. She says, if we are looking for truly new and creative solutions to the problems that we as a, as a society face, then we need to be honest and courageous about the fact that some of our tried and true methodologies, so tried and true methodologies, do have a limit. Okay, so, so, so what is she saying here? Like, if, I just, if we just slow down here and look at what she's saying, well, she's actually saying that the the study of the occult, remember this is, the, this is a master's degree of occultism, right? The study of the occult, the study of magic, will present solutions for the problems that we as a society face. So that's kind of a, a, long, a long road from saying, well, hey, these people, they, they just want to, you know, study their history and the archaeology. It's like, no, they actually want to use this kind of spiritualism as a solution for societal ills. So they want to actually integrate this and present it as, as a solution for society. So just to sort of like, if you, the mask finally kind of comes off and they're like, no, we actually believe in this stuff because they have to believe in it in order to, for, in order to believe that it pre presents solutions to societal woes. So the whole thing is, as they said in the be beginning about illusion and deception. Uh, basically, as these old um, pagan religions return back to a state of dominance, and as simultaneously, and not as a coincidence, the society itself completely degrades and falls apart, you know, perhaps back to what it was pre-Christendom on a long enough timeline. If you enjoyed that video, please don't forget to like it. Also, I have other videos that you might enjoy. I have links in the description down below as to how you can support this work. So thank you so much.